Hello, good uh, evening, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning, depending whatever time it is, wherever you are today. I'm so excited again coming to your screen. And today we are talking about your personality, how your personality affects uh, decisions that you make in life, for example, in marriage, relationships, or friends, and serving God and your job, how your personality really can affect your surrounding and things that are happening around you that is very, very important when we talk about personality. So when we talk about personality, we're simply talking about character. Your character is very, very important. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We were talking about the four personalities. We talked a little bit about the sanguine. We talked a little bit about the, um, I think that was a choleric. Today we'll be talking about the uh, melancholy and the phlegmatic. And then lastly, hopefully tomorrow, God willing, we're going to be talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So we are going to get started now, right now. So God bless you. And for those of you that are joining in right now, God bless you. Ani, God bless you there for joining in. And uh, it's exciting. We are going to be talking about that. And uh, Given, God bless you. Given Zimber, God bless you for joining in. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Richard Siwale there. God bless you. Amen. So we're going to be going on again talking about the personalities here. Now, I want you to understand this just as we're going to be going on. Probably maybe we just want to start by prayer and then we're going to go ahead. Father, in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus of Nazareth, Lord, I just want to thank you for your people that are here today and those that will join me later on, God, that, Lord, let your spirit just minister to them, O oh God, and let they can learn something. Anoint me to teach and anoint them to listen in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus of Nazareth. I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. And everybody said, Amen. Sister Adela, God bless you for joining in right now. Tonight we are dealing specifically with the personality, how your personality affects things you do, how your personality affects how you relate to God and in marriage and relationships and friends and families, almost everything that you do around you. So now let's get started. So as we start talking about personality, ladies and gentlemen, one thing I want you to understand that the most important influence or human influence upon your life, some people say that, you know, it's because of the books that you read and the kind of people that you meet, those that influence your life, the school that you go to. But I want to say something a little bit probably opposite to what people say. I would say that the most important uh, uh, human influence in life, it, whether you believe it or not, whether you realize or you don't realize it, is that is your inherited temperament that was passed on to you upon conception. So when we are talking about temperament, what we mean, we are talking about the personality. When we talk about personality, we are talking about disposition. So your temperament, your personality is produce, uh, produces spontaneous actions and reactions and affecting your dislikes and your likes and uh, many of your prejudices in life that they're as a result of your temperament. You know, I just say that it's uh, like, you know what, uh, it produces spontaneous reactions uh, affecting your likes and your dislikes. And your prejudices are all set up because of your temperament or your personality, your disposition, if you want to put it that way. So we get started now. Now, temperament, really what it is, it's your character. Character is everything. If you have a good character in life, you're going to do a lot of good, good, good stuff. You know, a, a bad character, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, it's a disaster. It's a recipe for a catastrophe if you have a bad character. And we'll be talking about the godly character later on in the next uh, program. And I pray that you'll be sticking out with me. So wherever you're watching from, please feel free to share with me there. Say you are watching from maybe Zambia. You're watching from Chalahoochee, California, or Cucamonga. Wherever you are in Japan, in Korea, in South America, wherever you are, God bless you. So today we're talking about character. So let's go now. First of all, 
character. It's very important that you have a good, good, godly character because character can bring, can bring you into the place of honor or dis, the place of dishonor. Because of your character, you can be honored because of your character. You can be dishonored. You can be brought in those two places, the place of honor, the place of dishonor, based upon your character. So character is very, very, very important. And your character determines how far you can go in life. How, how far you can go in life is determined by your character. And also your character really is uh, a foundation of your destiny. You know, I gave an example yesterday. I was trying to talk to you about the people, two guys, two fellows that were trying to build a house. And the first one just started digging, 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 and he did it so fast. He put the foundation up. And within a few uh, months, within a year, the house was standing. But the other fellow was digging and digging and digging. A year passed. He keeps digging and digging and digging and digging. Until after a while, the other guy's house was standing. Everything was finished. He started to leave in there. But the other fellow, he didn't even complete his house. He was still digging foundation. It took so long just to finish the foundation. But after he was done building his building, it was, a, you know, so many stories of the buildings that he put on that. Then the other guy says, why didn't you tell me that's what you were doing? He says, oh, because you're in a hurry. So if you want to go higher in life, the deeper your foundation, the higher you can go. Because your foundation sustains your success in life. Your foundation is your character. To have a good character is more important than anything else. And I pray that God will help us today as we talk about character. We're going to see certain personalities that people have and then we discuss from there. So your character is the foundation of your destiny. How high you want to go depends how deeper you dig. If you want to go so high, you better dig deep because your character sustains your success. Everything you do in life will be determined by your character, your character, your promotion, your character. You have a successful marriage, relationship with people, your character. Now, you know, you might be rich. You might be a rich man. But if your character is cantankerous and very rambunctious ar around people, you know what? It's just going to, people are going to say you're just a foolish man despite the riches that you have. Because riches without character, that's a big recipe for another disaster. So what we need, again, it's character. Character is important. Preachers, your character is important. If you want to serve God, those in ministry, those who want to go higher in life, remember character, character. Character is very important. So I'll be talking about that a little more. Now, your character really sustains your success and your failures. Now, that seems like uh, a catch-22 sentence there or phrase that I just said. But I want to explain a little bit there as we go on. I'm just kind of laying out foundations because we're going to be going through some stuff today. So... Your character sustained your success and your failure. For example, for you to succeed, you have to, good, to have a good character. Because character can determine a lot of things in your life. People can be attracted to you because of your character. Or people, you can be repelling people because of your character. Because of your character, your character will determine what kind of responsibility that can be given to you. For example, if you're a wishy-washy or mumby-pumby kind of a person, you don't deserve to be given a good or a great responsibility because you're not reliable. So your character, character is everything. So, now, your success... Your success is sustained by your character, and your failures are sustained by your character. I'll try and explain that to try and uh, put it in a simpler verbiage there, and I'll try and expound and propound on it. So the first thing, success, we know what success is. Now, failures. How can good character sustain failure? Well, listen to this. For example, if you were trying to do something in life, and then things fall apart, Many people, they seem to have a tendency of going back to try and do something using shortcuts. In other words, they try to do dubious 
ways in order to get whatever they wanted to get because they couldn't achieve it in the right way. So the end justifies the means. So they'll try everything to do even illegal things in order to get where they are. Well, because of that now, how your character will sustain you there is, is that you decide to do things the right way despite the failures or things that are happening you decide, especially if you're a child of God, you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness, you decide to do things the godly way. Godly way is the way to God. No shortcuts in the kingdom of God. Remember the children of Israel, when they were supposed to be getting over to the other side, to the promised land, that journey was supposed to take them about two weeks, in fact, 11 days, according to what theologians would say. But it took them 40 years. Why? Because of their vicissitude attitude. In other words, they were old was grumbling, complaining, and not getting it as God was talking to them. Then God says, okay, you, you, don't, you haven't learned yet. Take another lap, take another lap. And all those people died in the wilderness, and then God raised up a new generation, which was called the Joshua generation, who followed God. They obeyed God. They trusted God. So please don't let your character cause you to be circumlocating in life, because it's going to be detrimental to your life, and you'll never get to your destiny. You never achieve anything if your character seems to have flaws here and there. Remember, character is everything. So I just said to you that your character determines which people. You can attract people through your character or you can repel people. And uh, your character also determines what kind of responsibility you receive. Now, if you're a woman, you might be looking so good as if you just fell from heaven and when the women, when men are walking by or you are walking by, you turn next. Everybody looks at you. You know, they can't help it but notice you. And then you think, wow, because of my beauty, everybody likes me. You might be so beautiful like an angel that just came from heaven but yet if your character is cantankerous, your character has flaws in it, you know what? Your beauty means nothing because people look at character. Character is everything. So be very careful. Watch your character. May God help you. May God help us together about characters. Now, we're going to be talking about, uh, we talked about some, for those of you who did not uh, find out the two videos that, uh, the one video that we have, we talked about two characters yesterday, which is uh, 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 the sanguine and the choleric. And today we'll be talking about the melancholy and the phlegmatic. And all of them, we're looking at the positive part of it and the negative part of it and what they need in order to be effective in life and how to serve God, how they respond to circumstances and when it comes to God, how they do things. So I'm going to go out, do a little bit of a recap on sanguine. So we're going to be looking at it again. I'll say it again. We have uh, a sanguine, we have a choleric, and we have a melancholy and and we have a phlegmatic. So I'm just going to go through a little bit about the sanguine and a little bit about choleric. Then we're going to go into our subject today, which is melancholy. So the sanguine, what, what kind of a personality or what kind of a character is the sanguine? First of all, we do understand that sanguines, they are always out, uh, they're outgoing, they're extrovert kind of individuals. That's their temperament. You know, they're always outgoing. You know, they're most talkative and very outgoing and they're very very warm and humorous and they're all re responsive and you know they can look at the total stranger from nowhere and make friends right there and you know they they're lovely people they seem to be uh, uh, surrounded by people around them and people kind of naturally loves the sanguine you know but the sanguine really they really uh, worry they don't worry so much about the past or the future they're kind of like happy happy people all the time when you see they have a they you know they live on cloud nine all the time so that's the sanguine, just a little bit about them. And then, you know, they're they like pleasure. They extract pleasure in every day. You know, they just want to enjoy their life. They have no time for worry, worry all the time and sitting out there and depressed. They're looking as so somber as if they've been, uh, they've drank uh, uh, lemon juice or uh, baptized in lemon juice. They, they're always happy people. And then, you know, they interpret events of life uh, that are happening today. Re re just 
by today. For example, if something is happening, they make uh, interpret that with the immediate thing. For example, if somebody walks around here, maybe a sanguine was going to get married to somebody and they're looking for somebody. The first thing, they'll look at the person and look at him, what he does today. They don't look so much about the future. It's what is happening right now. What do you do? Oh, I don't work. I don't do this. Like, oops, sorry. Next door. That's how their personality is. That's how those guys... That's how they function most of the time. That, and then the other thing that they do sometimes, you know, they get into trouble because they normally make decisions out of their emotions, you know, by what they feel. If they feel good, they can make a decision depending on how they feel. They don't look at the, uh, the consequences or what's going to come. They don't weigh most of the time like realities around them. What they do, they just look at this thing. And if they feel good, they say, yes, I'll do it. You know, that's how they do it. And most of the time they get into trouble because they don't anticipate the consequences that will follow making decisions out of their emotions. In fact, to try and put it in in a good way is that their emotions are around their sleeves. In other words, that they make everything is about emotions. You know, I feel bad about you. Oops, you're out. You know, I feel good about you. Oops, you're in. You know, that kind of uh, personality there. All right. They're always feeling, feeling. But the word of God tells us we don't walk by what we feel or see or, or hear. We walk by what the word of God. This is what the sanguine has to learn. And you know, they simply jump into things so easily. When there's something going on, they just jump in without thinking. You can call a sanguine and says, okay, you know what? I'm giving you an invitation. They'll say yes without even thinking about it. You know, they sign deals that they don't know what's going to happen later because they, they regret later because they never look at the uh, dynamics of uh, the decisions that are making, you know, things, the replications and the things that are going to happen thereafter. They just do everything by what they feel. And in all feelings play a dominant role in their lives, okay? They are spontaneous people. You know, they are so sensitive, emotionally sensitive. They can cry easily. They cry easily. You know, they love easily. They hurt so easily. I know they are frequent, always repenting. They are always restless people. They are always rush, rush, rush in everything. Run, run, run into some things, you know, and uh, without weighing the consequences. So that's what really gets them into a lot of trouble. You know, they respond to invitation without really evaluating the, uh, the, the, what is involved in the, in the invitation. That's the kind of people that they are. You know, they, let's say for example, when it comes to church, they lose interest in things so quickly. They can start to go to this church there. They'll look at that church. They'll like it for a little while and all of a sudden lose interest. And then they're going to go out. You know, they're hopey, hopey kind of people. Like uh, kind of like grasshopper kind of stuff. You know, there's a little bit of instability in there that needs to be adjusted by the fruit of the Spirit upon the coming of the Holy Spirit in their lives. God begins to change some thing there and they have the character of Christ all right Th those are the sanguine and we were talking about that if you want to look at that more you can go to the next video there and then you know uh, they always tend to uh, go quickly in things when the door opens they just jump in without finding out whether it's God or not they hardly wait they hardly inquire on God they make decisions and then ask God later on that's a very big big uh, problem there sometimes they disrupt their families and uh, if it's a man you know they work here they work there and they keep moving in life they never settle down so these are the kind of people that's a sanguine there you know they need to learn more from God and that God can help them. And we talked about that. So the problems that they have, they're touchy people sometimes. You know, they like to touchy touch. Now, living in a society that we're living in, which is a sexual oriented culture, you might get into trouble if you touch somebody inappropriate. Remember that. But these people are touchy touchy people. You know, like sometimes you might be in trouble because of that. And then, you know, they simply, they can easily violate their morals so quickly without even 
thinking about it. By the time they violate their morals, then the consequences come, then they begin to regret. So it becomes a very problem. And then they make decision really, you know, uh, that are estranged uh, from God and they need self-control. Remember, the Bible talks about that we need self-control. Now, we'll be talking about the book of Galatians chapter 5, which talks about the fruit of the Spirit. So these people in this character, in this category, they need the fruit of the Spirit. In fact, every one of these personalities that we're going to be looking at, we all need the fruit of the Spirit in our life, okay? Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, a sanguine, when the sanguine, the, the, the biggest answer to the sanguine that he needs in their life, as I'm talking, probably you might find yourself in this category. Now, it's not that you are bad. It's just that people are different. But the only good character or the only good uh, disposition or personality or temperament is that, that which comes from the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit comes in you, he affects you, and you begin to produce the fruit of the Spirit, which we'll be looking at tomorrow. Now, we're talking about the sanguine. The answer to the problem of the sanguine, number one, they need to learn to wait on God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, the Bible declares, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Sanguines need to have time where they can wait on God to ask, to inquire, to entreat God, to ask help from another dimension, which is God's dimension, to come into their life. So sanguines need that. That's the first thing that they need in their life. And uh, the second thing is that they, they don't need to make permanent decisions over temporal circumstances. I gave you an example yesterday. I was talking about, uh, for example, if you are working at work, you're at work and somebody insults you and all of a sudden you go there, you say, okay, because this guy insulted me yesterday. He said bad things to me. I'm quitting this job. You know, a sanguine, they can always do that. They'll make temporal, uh, they'll make a permanent decision over temporal circumstance. Now, imagine if the guy comes back again and says, you know what, what I did yesterday, please forgive me. Oh, you've, you've put a resignation letter already, so you've made a permanent decision over temporal circumstances, so be very careful with that. Don't go by your emotions that are on your sleeves. Always be laid by the Holy Spirit, all right? So the other thing that the sanguine needs to really, really learn is that they are always hasty, you know, people in making major decisions. They never think through. By the time they sign on the dot, they realize that they've signed their life away, it's too late. Inquire, inquire, ask God before you make any decision in your life. That's why the Bible talks about King David. He was a very successful king because he always inquired. When David was going to go for war, he asked God, shall I go or shall I not? If God says don't go, he did not go. If God says go, he went. That's how David operated. That's why he was one of the best and one of the uh, powerful kings of old because he always was seeking the face of God. And you know what? The sanguine has to understand. Sometimes we're so hurried. They run, run, run because they think if I don't make decision today, this opportunity would go. I want you to understand that when God opens the door, hear me out. When God opens the door, no man can close it. They have to come to a place where they understand that as long as God has opened the door, God will keep that door as long as it's there. He'll keep that door as long as it will take them to make the decisions whether to take it or not. They need to wait on God. Waiting on God is a very important for a sanguine because good things comes to those that wait. Remember that, people of God. All right? Avoid stampede actions that generate emotions and you make decisions out of your emotions. The Word of God talks about that in the book of Psalm 46 and verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. And Psalm 27 verse 14, you can find out that one. All right? Now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Character. Character is defined as the strength or the moral uh, fiber, you know, of a person. I gave an example. This is just a recap, and then we're going to go to the crux of the matter for today. So, you know, an example like uh, Tozer, uh, A.W. Uh, a. Tozer says that it describes as character, 
is as uh, is the excellency of moral as the excellence of god is purity and the excellency of an artist is beauty and the excellency of a man is character the excellency of a man or a woman is character 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 remember that keep that in mind lack of character people is uh, is moral rot is moral deficient then a person likes character they tend to have to be to have a bad behavior, they behave in dishonest manner, they're not authentic, they're uncharitable in the things that they do because they don't have a godly character. You know, uh, a person of character is really uh, noted by their honesty in life and their, uh, their uh, the ethics, or so to speak, or their charitable uh, description of such a man, you know, in, in principle, really what the, it is, it's like a woman who has, who has integrity or a woman, a man of integrity that you would know them really by the things that they do you tell. A person of character, really, what happens is that uh, character sums up your dispositions, your thoughts, your intentions, your desires, and your actions. It's summing up that. So that's what his character is. So when we say character, we mean your disposition, your thoughts, your intentions, your desires, and your actions all summed up in one word, character or temperament. That's what it is. You know, it's a very good thing to remember that you need to have a good character. You know, and good character, remember, is that it's the character is gauged by the tendencies that you have in life all the time and not isolated stuff, but that's continuously thing that goes on in your life. Glory be to God. Now, as Christians, people of God, remember Christian character can be formed by commitment to Christ. As you give yourself to Christ, as you follow Christ, as you dedicate yourself that character can be formed, can be developed. So if you are there in this category, you think, oh my God, I'm tossed, you are not. There is hope because character can be formed as you follow Christ, as you commit yourself to Christ, you know, and your ability to, you have the ability to do good and you have the ability to do bad. But when you commit yourself to God, you will see that the ability to do good will continue and the ability to do bad will be lessened up. Again, this is all about about character. Now, quickly, we're going to recap on the choleric, and then we're going to go to uh, to the uh, melancholy and phlegmatic. Now, when we talked about the choleric, that's now another personality. So the first one was sanguine. The second one now is what is known as choleric. Now, cholerics really, they make very good soldiers most of the time. You know, the cholerics, they are uh, extra, extroverts people. In other words, they're outgoing, but on the mild side, they're not as outgoing as the sanguine. They're a little bit, a little bit mild. You know, they're kind of like crusaders. They're activists. They push, they like to push, push, push. They try to motivate people. You know, they are, they are so much goal-oriented. Everything is uh, uh, goal-oriented, goal-oriented. You know, they have goals for everything, which sounds good, all right? But we'll see their flaws later on as we go on. You know, they have uh, a nature uh, of uh, taking over. If they, if they like to take over things all the time, and they like to be in control of everything. Now, people of God, let's face it. You can't be in control of everything in your life. There's sometimes things are going to get out of control. And because of that, that's another flaw for this one. We'll be talking about that as we go on. You know, they tend to... Uh, to uh, to have a behavior where they don't yield easily to compromise. They only compromise if something, you know, is, uh, they're going to gain something out of it, then they can compromise. If they know there's nothing out of it, then they don't compromise. They're self-willed, and they enjoy bossing others around, even though people don't like, they just boss, boss, boss them. They thrive on opposition. When there's opposition, they kind of like it, because that's how these guys are. That's how the uh, choleric is. You know, the most, uh, and this is the most undeveloped character emotionally among us all the four characters here, among us all the four uh, temperaments or disposition, if you like. You know, they, they, it's very difficult for you to gain approval from 
a uh, a a choleric you know no matter what you can do for cholerics cholerics they are very sometimes they don't really appreciate they're just like that that's how they are they're kind of that people you know they have uh, a reputation of using people and dumping them they use people dump them use the people and dump them you know as long as they can achieve what they want in life they, it doesn't matter what they stay on they can kill you and do whatever they want they can do as you know to them the end justifies the means it doesn't matter how I get there as long as I get there, which is a very, very dangerous place to be. You know, in decision making, they are self-reliant. They rely on themselves to make decisions. They seldom would ask anybody for advice. They want to do it themselves. It's I, me, and myself. You know, the first, uh, the first difficult that they have is walking really in total surrender or in total obedience to God. You know what? Because they think everything is by mighty no by power everything uh, by mighty and power they want to take everything in their own way you know they're decisive which is good to be decisive you know but they seldom ask for advice you know sometimes the Bible declares that uh, in the multitude of counselors there is wisdom but without uh, that you know sometimes they end up goofing and they make mistakes even though they make mistakes they still want to pull the mistake with them they don't want to stop and look at it I'm going the wrong direction I'm doing it wrong they don't want to stop they want to do it you know they're kind of people that can force a square uh, in a round hole that it has to fit they'll pound it until it fits it's like forcing stuff so we have to learn sometimes in life you don't have to force you let things go for it's not by mighty nor by power but by my spirit says the lord you know, they're very great at uh, confidence, but the confidence they have is then in their own ability. We are taught by God not to trust in our own understanding. We are to put our trust in God in everything that we do. You know, and uh, when they're first with trouble, really their head goes down, these kind of people there. You know, they tend to uh, pull through, they tend to pull through whatever is happening. They want to pull and just pull, pull, pull. Even though things are not happening, they want to pull through the consequences. You're not realizing that they're making mistakes. They just want to force. They force, 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 force all the time. They enjoy working, you know, they enjoy working for God or even doing stuff for God when they are, but they're not totally submitted. If they can totally submit themselves to God, God would use some, yeah, them so mightily. All right, God can use them. Now, what is the answer to the choleric? And then we're going to go to the melancholy for today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, a choleric needs to come to a place of dependability upon God. To know that it's not by mighty nor by power, but everything that we do is through God, especially you as believers. Guess what? It's God who gives us strength. Today you walk up and you're sitting, you're watching there. It's not by your own power. There are people who've passed on, who've died before. Not just because they were foolish. Not that because you are better. Not because that you are wiser than them. It's by the grace of God. So cholerics have to come to an understanding that everything that happens, we need to surrender to God. And then they have to stop depending on common sense and depending on God. In other words, start to inquire from God before they make their own decisions that God can help them to make decisions because they kind of feel that it's their own strength it's not your own strength all right so that's the answer first answer and the second is that you know they uh, they need to call on God in decision making sometimes they say no 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 this is so small decision so i can do it more no it's everything seek god you know seek god in everything and then they if they begin to consult god god's going to start to use them so mightily they'll have a proper understanding of direction that comes straight from god most of the time because they are self-willed and very independent they think they don't need anybody to direct them or to help them so it's the same they will take the same thing and direct it to god i can do it instead of asking for help they literally ask for our device when things are going they just do they want to do it they need to trust god they need to come to a place to know that uh, it's God and follow God. They need to totally surrender to God in uh, Psalm 100 and uh, 
27. You can read that later on. And then Proverbs chapter 3, verse uh, 5 to 10, the Bible declares that trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. All right? Acknowledge him, and he will direct their path or your path, if wherever you are. It says, then, uh, be wise, not in your own eyes, but of course, with the Lord and depart from evil. And that's the answer to that. Zechariah 4, verse 6, the Bible says, For he answered, It's not by mighty nor by power. Now, that's a paraphrased version for me. It's not by mighty nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And Psalm 127, verse 1, it says, Except the Lord build the house, the builders build in vain. So they have to come to that understanding. If you are choleric, you have to understand that. And I pray that God will help you. So now, today, let's go into a, a miracle. So, so far, so good. We've looked at uh, uh, two personalities. The first one was a sanguine, and the second one was uh, what is known as uh, 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 sanguine, and then... Um, uh, uh, melancholy. Now we're coming to melancholy. That's what we're going to be looking at here. So we looked at sanguine and choleric, then melancholy. So, and then we'll have phlegmatic coming on down the road. All right. So now, what a melancholy is like? Really, melancholies. These they are uh, very gifted amongst all the personalities or the disposition, the temperaments that we have. They call the melancholy. They're so gifted. You know, they are less appreciated by people. You know. They are introverts because everything is inwards. Usually, that sometimes they are closed up. Yeah, they are quiet, you know, by nature. They have a high IQ and they tend to be so moody. They are so moody. Today they're on cloud nine. Tomorrow they're so happy. The other day they look like they've been baptized in lemon juice. They are moody people, you know, and they're easily discouraged. They are born to be perfectionists. They are perfectionists in everything that you do. Now, sometimes that can be very, very big problem where if you do something as a perfectionist, there are people who've gone to set an instance that even when you look in their cupboards, right, in their cupboards, they, they, they live or the cans in there, they really face you. The greens is with the greens and the red with the greens. You know, sometimes when you go in their house, it's even, you're afraid to even touch something because it looks like, oh boy, it's so perfect. And uh, if you do something, they don't appreciate it until they touch it, then it's done. Not you. When you do it, this hasn't been done well, but if they touch it, then it's done. Now, that becomes a problem. If you are married, then it becomes a problem in marriage. It starts to be the point of contention there. So you have to be really, really be very careful. May God help us as we go on here. So be careful with that. And they're moody. You know, how do you like to be around the people who are so moody? They're happy today. The five minutes, they're so happy. And the other, they look so depressed like anything else. So you really wonder what is going on. And then, you know, they beat these people, the, uh, the melancholies, they beat themselves up so much, you know, because they think they can do better. But yet they're doing the best that they can and they're doing better but they're always so critical they're the best critic of themselves and they put themselves down oftentimes and they do that all the time all right and they are self-sacrifice which is a very positive thing they can sacrifice big time they just sacrifice they like to do that they can sacrifice themselves to do something these guys they like others too but they're very, very quiet sometimes. You really wonder what is going on in their mind. You think, uh, is this person okay or whatever. You know, they thrive on the worthy challenges that are challenges that are worthy. You know, they, are, uh, they really like uh, to deal with uh, uh, things that are dedicated. For example, if they dedicate themselves to something, they make sure that it's done so well. They always try to submit themselves to a goal greater than themselves. And that's why they find it very easy to submit to God because they know that they cannot do it on their own. And most of the time what they do, they like the power that is greater than themselves. And that's why it's easy for them even to receive Christ, many of that, because they always look out to the 
power greater than themselves, but they can do greater things too, all right? And they never rush in decisions. When it comes to decision making, they're so analytical in things. They look through, you know, back and forth to them. Like when it comes to decision making, it's like a trauma. They're going through a trauma. When it comes to decision making, <laughs> excuse me, they have a problem between accepting or rejection. It takes them time. They'll think through it. They analyze and analyze upside down, back and forth. Think through that deep thinkers thinking through just to make one decision. And sometimes when they make a decision, they make it. It's very hard for them to, re, uh, to reverse it. They make it. It's done. So you have to be very careful with this kind of people. You know, they, they, they really enjoy the peace of God. They worry too much about things, you know. This, this, they're always looking at the consequences, what will follow. If I should I, should I do it? If I do this, then this will happen. This, 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 they're always analyzing, analyzing, in analyzing, they take so much time. And then they become anxious, and then it becomes so hard for them even to find the will of God. This is a melancholy that we are talking about. That's the problem that they have there. You know, they're too analytical in nature. Everything they're analytical. Or if you say hi to them, you say hi to them, and then uh, maybe you, you touch somebody. Then they'll be like, why did they do it? They want to analyze everything, everything. Sometimes we can be too analytical and get into, you know, confused a little bit because we want to understand little everything. You know, they're like that. Of course, if, it, if you give them a problem, imagine what they can do with the problem because they'll try and analyze everything. You know, they always want uh, to examine things. You know, always, always trying to examine things, whatever is happening. They try to examine, examine everything. Now, the biggest problem is like they don't really like negativity and criticism. It becomes a very prob a big problem for them, their criticism and negativity. TVs, uh, the people who are negative around them, it becomes a really big, big, big trauma. So the answer to a melancholy is that they need to practice praying all the time and giving thanks for what God has given them because they beat themselves up even though God has given them things to do. And they have to understand that we are human beings. We are not perfect. Only God is perfect. So have that type of allowance because if you, you are a melancholy you want to get married you want to go and look for a perfect woman because these people they appreciate art so much and they look uh, they're so analytical at things if you're looking for a perfect person or maybe physically looking or maybe a woman or a man that you want to marry they have to look perfect they have everything they have to have a coca-cola bottle shape whatever if they're women and you want to marry somebody mr perfect you will never find mr Pe perfect they might look perfect but yet their character there's flaws in there but you have to understand that there are things you can change and things you cannot change. For example, if their nose or their ears look like the car, you know, with two doors open coming down the highway, there's nothing you can do about that. You either take them or you don't take them. There are things you can change and things you cannot change. So they have to understand that only God is perfect for a melancholy here. You know, they are driven by their need uh, of... Uh, uh, the, by the need of uncertainty, because if, they, if they're not sure, it becomes a very, very big problem, even just to totally surrender, because they want to know how it's going to happen, how, how, how here. But sometimes they need to walk, and then it becomes very hard just to trust, to throw themselves before God, to walk in faith. You know, uh, these, these kind of people, they ask or our device, the melancholy would ask, which is a positive thing there. You know, uh, the need to look to God rather than to problems because they're always analyzing. They want to take problems and analyze, analyze. You know, you have to come to a place where you totally surrender to God because God's going to help you. Now, let's look at the phlegmatic and then we'll talk a little bit about what we all need all together. What's a phlegmatic? A phlegmatic is uh, uh, a phlegmatic that's another personality or another disposition, another temperament. Now, for a phlegmatic, ladies and gentlemen, these, they are so slow and very calm. You know, they are easygoing. You know, they're super quiet. 
they're introvert. In other words, of course, they're, they're introvert. They're not extrovert, but they're introvert. And it's like they never get upset if you look at them. These are phlegmatics. And then uh, they literally articulate ideas. They can only articulate the idea if they know that they won't be criticized or they won't be offended. They're extremely nice people to hang around. You'd see them nice, but yet on the quiet side, they're very quiet there. You know, and then uh, they are born to be diplomats. You know, they kind of like peace. Now, like peace, they want things to be done in peace, 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 peace. Now, here's a danger on this one, too. You know, sometimes it's peace, peace. We can't do like peace at all costs. There's some, sometimes where we need to confront certain things here, that's where you, they'll come in. I think we'll come back to that as we go on there. All right, so these are like peacemakers. And then they always love. Children love them. They are loved by children because they are kind of quiet and they are peaceful makers. They are peacemakers and kids really love them a lot. And they are competent but by nature, you know. But uh, they are very so low when it comes to activity. They are kind of on the low path here. And they tend to be spectators most of the time. They just sit and look. But they can do stuff. But yet they just sit and watch. They like to watch. And that could be a biggest hindrance for them because they just want to be spectators. You know, you got to have to push them in order to do some stuff there. You know, they are very uh, pleasant. They have a very pleasant disposition, which is character of course, the temperament is very pleasant around, to be around them. All right. Now, here's the problem that uh, uh, our phlegmatics have. Most of the time is that they tend to simplify decision process in life. You know, they kind of try to simplify everything. Some things might be very complicated, but they're trying to simplify it. But that, that could be a very problem because then you are not an, analyzing some stuff. You are overlooking certain things, and then that could be a really big, big, big problem. And they are obsessed with us protecting themselves than anything else. They don't care. They want to protect themselves most of the time, and that, that's an obsession. You know, remember, it's only God that can protect us. And now, this, in this category, a lot of people are in there, especially if people are speaking against you. A lot of us, we want to protect you, ourselves. But guess what? Let God protect you. You cannot protect yourself. There's going to be some stuff that people are going to be saying. You know, the best example I like to say is that, for example, if you were a king, if you look the kings of old or the president uh, of a country, you know what they do? A president doesn't just respond to every little thing here and there. Everything that they say, they come out and they, they got to say something. You're going to be a very cheap president if you are like that. You got to, you know, you know that there's going to be people that don't like you as a president. They're going to say some stuff. It's not everything, every Jim and Jack or every Juliet and, uh, you know, who you talk to when they say stuff. You got to have to really be very careful because you're a person in position of authority and what you say really matters. So, you know, don't be obsessed and to try to protect everything. Let God defend you, especially that you are a child of God. By the way, if you didn't know, not everybody likes you. There are people, in fact, that don't like you. So how are you going to do that? You can't be liked by all people. There are people who just don't like you. People even who have never seen you and when they see you for the first time, they just don't like you. So it doesn't matter if they don't like you. I always told people, that, you know, I don't care if you don't like me because I like me. I thank God because I'm created in the image of God. So not everybody will like you. There's going to be people that don't like you, but don't worry about them. Keep going forward. Don't waste your time to try and be liked by everybody. In life, you're going to offend people as you do make decisions to do certain things. You know, to make, you got to go forward, there's some stuff that's going to happen anyway. So these people, they like to protect themselves. So don't protect yourself, let God protect you. And you know, they, are, they hesitate in getting involved in phlegmatics and stuff. You know, hesitant, 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 you know. Should I, should I not, should I, should I not, should I, should I not. They worry too much about the consequences. If I do this, which is also a positive at the same time, but the negative at the same time, because they worry so much about the consequences, what would come after. Of course, this really helps them also to like uh, follow through. For example, 
They know if they're going to go and commit sin, what will be the repercussion? What will be the outcome of what I'm going to do? And then they think through of what's going to happen because many of us, when we fall into those things, we never think about what's going to come after. We just go and enjoy it, but then the problem comes after. But with these phlegmatics, they'll think through what is that, what I'm about to do, what's going to happen afterwards. So which is very good at the same time there, all right? But, and then uh, they tend to be, uh, to be uh, like selfish most of the time. They like their position. They try to protect their position. Everything, you know, they, they tend to be like that. And it's all very hard for them to share their love with others. They're a little bit stubborn. You know, they need to be pushed a little bit. And that's the problem there. You know, they're never open. Uh, they never uh, open themselves so much uh, to God sometimes. They kind of like, kind of like, you know, it's, it's a little bit, uh, should I, should I not, you know, but God can help them. Again, we look at the spirit of God, what God can do with them. You know, they need to examine their motives and their decisions making. Remember, when God judges, you and I is going to judge us. Sometimes what we do, People judge us by what we do. When they look at us, we're doing something. For example, if I was going to buy a car for somebody here today, and I buy a car, to you people that are watching me there, you're going to say, oh, Conrad is a good guy. He buys cars for people. To you, I'm good. But when God looks at me, he'll say, you wicked man. Why? Because God is looking at the motive behind the intention why I'm buying that car for that person. Am I buying that car to bless them? Or my intention is that they should love me? Or my intentions maybe is to commit sin with them? What is my intention? So that's why it's different the way God looks at stuff and the way we look at stuff. Remember, intentions, intentions. So when it comes to a phlegmatic, a phlegmatic, they have to always analyze their intentions, because sometimes intentions can be very, very, very bad. And, you know, they are uh, hesitant in things, hesitating, hesitating all the time. And then most of the time, they kind of lack to believe God because they're always looking at the results, everything. You know, uh, if I leave here, what will happen over there? I, no, no, come on. You know, you need faith. Faith is a substance for things that are hopeful, the evidence of things that are not sin. Where you don't see anything, you believe God. So there's times in life you're going to just take a leap of faith to believe that everything will fall in place. For example, when the children of Israel had come to the brinks of the river Jordan, when Joshua took them uh, took over from Moses after Moses had died. When they were coming to, when they came to the river Jordan, they were standing with the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant upon their shoulders. But as long as they stood on the shore, nothing happened. But the moment they stuck their feet in the water, the water parted. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, as long as you wait and stand on the side and wait for God to do stuff there, oh God, move that there, go to... It will never happen. You're going to have to take a step of faith. Great men and great women of God that have gone through in life that have achieved stuff is because they were men of faith. They were not hesitant. They took steps of faith in believing God. Now, the answer to the phlegmatic. The answer is that they need to totally surrender to God and need to stay in the word because the word, the Bible declares that faith cometh by uh, hearing and hearing by the word of God. They need to be givers. They need to surrender totally to God. Now, if you look at all these personalities, they're all different. Now, these, these are the four major personalities that people have. Now, sometimes there might be somebody who's a sanguine, and also you could see some sanguine in them. You could see some choleric in there. Maybe you could see a little bit of melancholic in there. You could see a little bit of phlegmatic in there. So it's like a mixture of everything. But the best personality, what is the best personality among us all these four? Well, the best personality is the personality that has been affected by the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible declares that, you know, when Jesus was going in the book of John chapter 14, the Bible says, I'm going to the Father to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. If I go, I will send a comforter who will come, and he will be with you, and he will be in you, and will be on you. He will be with you. So he will receive from God and impart it to you. He will direct you. He will 
counsel you, he will tell you things to come. It was the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, he begins to change your perspective on life. He begins to produce the fruit of the Spirit, which we'll be looking at tomorrow one by one. All of them will be looking at tomorrow, God willing, we'll be looking at them one by one. Now, it's the fruit of the Spirit that creates a character that is godly base character because you know thieves can be good for a while but you know these are continuous manifestation of the fruit of the spirit that by their fruit you shall know them you shall know them you should see the fruit of the spirit that will be continuous flowing out of us that comes as a result of the indwelling of the power of the holy spirit again remember when the holy spirit comes in then you give him the place that he deserves in your heart you surrender to him the fruit of the spirit begins to be an automatic thing because he is indwelling there that's why you could see the opposite for those people that are demon possessed that don't uh, depict the same uh, characteristics or the same traits of like the people who are baptized or who are filled with the spirit of God there's a difference there you see that some of them will be haters some of them might be obsessive compulsive liars you know and because there's a difference between when the Holy Spirit comes he produces the fruit in us now the thing is when we surrender to God surrender 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 all these characters that I'm talking about the sanguine the phlegmatic and uh, the choleric and uh, the melancholy, they all need to surrender to God. When they surrender to God, then God begins to work. He can use any one of them. He can use you. Maybe you are sanguine. Maybe you are choleric. Maybe you are melancholy. Maybe you are phlegmatic. God can use you. When you surrender your potential to God, you'll be able to revolutionize the whole world for Jesus because the Spirit of God will start to dwell in you. You come against your fears and all those things that kind of makes you to be uh, maybe self or to think you're self-willed that you can do it on your own but when you submit yourself to God you see what God can do in your life again the most perfect of the most powerful character among us all is that which the Holy Spirit produces in us when we surrender now sometimes you know when you talk about the Holy Spirit some places you might even lose your credentials for talking about the Holy Spirit people don't even talk about him some people say he's an active force you can call the Holy Spirit an active force because the Holy Spirit has emotions he talks he can talk he can be grieved, he can be insulted, and only a person can do that. He's the third person of the Trinity that needs to come and indwell in our lives. Then he can produce that. Then we can be powerful Christians. Remember when the disciples were so afraid when Jesus died, but when the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them, people like Peter, who were timid, a little shy, a little afraid, you know, uh, but when the Spirit of God came upon them, they started to speak with power the glory of God had come and when people looked at them he says wait a minute these guys talk like Jesus why because of the Holy Spirit in them and I pray that you allow the Holy Spirit people of God whatever your character whatever your disposition is submit it into God some of us we have problems maybe with uh, loving people or maybe with forgiving people we rush in decisions we make decisions by our emotions we never seek God but come to the place where you submit yourself to the Lordship of Jesus. You will see what God can do. He will guide you. Remember, God is not a man that he can lie. Everything that he says is true, and it's going to bless your heart. So submit yourself to God. Ask the Holy Spirit. Surrender to him. Holy Spirit, come and help me. Help my anger. You know, sometimes people take anger management. When you have the fruit of the Spirit inside you, brother, it, it changes you. It changes you. You know, that, that uh, it, a miracle just takes place there. Your joy, you know, your peace, your patience, uh, your gladness, your kindness, and all these things that really affect your personality. When the Spirit of God comes in, again, we need to allow Him. We need to allow him. Now, there's some of you that are out there. We're going to be concluding the broadcast right now pretty soon. And uh, there's some of you out there that don't know Jesus as a personal savior. You are saying, Brother Conrad, I'd like to ask Jesus to come into my heart. Wherever you are right now, I'm going to ask you to pray with me. 
if you know how to pray, I'm going to ask you to pray for yourself and ask God to forgive your sin and ask Jesus to come into your heart and wash you in his precious blood. Because going to heaven or accepting Christ is not by going to church. You can go to church every Sunday and still remain a sinner. All right? It's like taking a wheelbarrow in a car, in a, in a showroom where they have Camaros, where they have muscle cars. The wheelbarrow doesn't change and become a muscle car. It's still uh, a wheelbarrow. Take, going to church doesn't make you a Christian. No baptism doesn't make you a Christian. You can get into the water, a dry sinner, uh, and you come out a wet sinner. The difference is the same. It's when you repent your sins and accept him to come into your life. That's what changes you and gives place in heaven. Of course, baptism comes down later on to obey God according to what the word of God declares there. Now, there's some people that say, you know what? I go to church every Sunday. I'm good. You know, I do, I'm not bad. Now, being good doesn't cut it either. What you need is Christ to come into your heart. It's not good people that are going to go to heaven. Even good people that are going to end up in the lake of fire. But it's Christ. Do you have Christ in your heart? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Have you surrendered your life to him? If not, I'm going to ask you right now to pray with me. Wherever you are, just say, Dear Jesus, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to come into my heart. I surrender myself. Please deliver me from my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Deliver me from the powers of darkness as I surrender to your Lordship. Come into my life. I quit and I surrender sin, Lord, in the name of Jesus to you. Wash me in your precious blood. Set me free. Accept me, Lord, as your child. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you were there, you prayed just that prayer with me. I want to ask you, here's a couple of things that you need to do. Number one, start reading your word of God. Pray every day. Find a good church where the word of God is preached, where Jesus is Lord, where they talk about the blood of Jesus, where they talk about Jesus being Lord, where they believe in the Holy Spirit. Where they believe in the word of God to be the supreme, the final authority. Not just revelation, but the word of God, all right? And uh, quit bad company and then go to church every Sunday. Start by reading the book of John. Read the whole book and pray every day just like you eat every day. And God's going to help you. Now, probably maybe you are in the city of Edmonton where we are and uh, you don't have a home church, I'd like to invite you to come at Living Hope Christian Center. We are at 3831, as you can see that address going down there, 3831, 116th Avenue in the Abbotsfield, in the Beverly area. We are behind the Drake Hotel there. If you came by the Drake Hotel, you could look through the things, you would see us across the street. And at Sunday 1030 and Sunday uh, in the evening at 630, uh, we have a service there, a dynamic service, and then you can also come on Tuesday at uh, 1 p.m. We do have a Bible study. They are very interactive. We ask questions and people. It's very interactive. It's good. And uh, we, 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 God is doing something great in there. And then on Fridays, we do have a prayer meeting. We pray for different things and just come to pray and seek the first of God for a situation. Now, if you were there, you've been, uh, uh, so if you are there now, you were listening to me about this personality, and you say, Brother Conrad, I need to pray. I need you to agree with me, because the Bible says one just is a thousand and two ten thousand, and if we agree together, all the viewers together, God's going to do something. Let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus right now. I command every satanic spirit and every powers of darkness that are holding on the people of God, every spiritual moratorium that has been put upon the people of God right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we destroy every satanic spirit of hell, every spiritual moratorium set or every invisible ceiling that has been set that you cannot arise above this. You'll be here and you'll never go anywhere. Right now, we break that in the name of Jesus, oh God, those curses that have been set upon the people of God. We break that right now in Jesus' mighty name, O oh God. I pray, Father, that God let your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that, oh God, as I hear the name Alice, O oh God, Alice, Alice, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for Alice, Alice, in Jesus' name, wherever you are, 
Right now, may the spirit of the living God touch you, may heal you, may set you free from your lung infection. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior right now, be healed. Alice, I want you to write me there. Or if I'm off air, please rate me, send me an email, send me, tag me there. I want to pray and I want to talk to you. May God bless you. Praise God. I am Conrad Santa, living in a changing world with the changing people, with the changing times. And uh, in my world, the supernatural is natural and nothing is impossible with God. Remember, people of God, keep watching Glory TV. Stay blessed and stay free. God bless you. See you tomorrow right here on Glory TV. Shalom, shalom.